Howdy. So last week, when I was sitting on my toilet, scrolling through my phone as one does, I found out that a lot of billionaires are investing tons and tons of money into a field called synthetic biology. And at first, I had no idea what that was, but looking deeper into it, it turns out it's way, way cooler than what I initially thought. So before we get into what synthetic biology is, why it's so important, and why it's the future, we first have to take a look at programming, because it turns out these two things go hand in hand. And so with normal programming, let's say Python programming, if I type in hello world into a Python IDE, what happens is that code is turned into machine code uh, that would then tell the computer what to do. And so synthetic biology is this buzzword that basically allows us to do the exact same thing that programming does. We get to read, we get to write, and we get to edit code. But this code is now genetic, and this code is now our DNA. And so the reason why it's so important is because now you're able to genetically modify organisms and make them essentially do our bidding. We get to revolutionize industries like agriculture, medicine, even cell-based meat industries. Hell, this technology is even shown to be effective in textile industries where the manufacturing process can be improved extraordinarily. I can't do words today. So actually like 3D printing, uh, synthetic biology has been around since the 1980s. But the reason why it's such a big deal and a buzzword now is because uh, technology has improved to such an extent that the price is getting cheaper because of robots and AI. And so what would take a lab assistant a week to do could now be done in a matter of a few hours by a robotic system. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, yeah, that's cool, but why should I care? And the reason why you should care is because it really impacts you and it will continue to do so in the foreseeable future. Companies like Distributed Bio has now been able to produce antibodies faster than our bodies. The OG antibody producers. And so with that, that sort of technology, we'd then be able to make generalized vaccines that could then cure not only one strain of a flu, but multiple. And then other companies are actually looking at using this technology to revolutionize the way we store data. And so they're thinking that if we have a constant volume, if we then store the digital information within the DNA, we'd have over 20,000 times more capacity per that volume than the hard drives available today. And so you'd be able to store about 600 billion gigabytes per meter cubed. Dang, like that is crazy. And then other companies like Memphis Meat is actually trying to bioengineer the meat and grow it in the lab. And so we don't have to butcher animals anymore. And so although these technologies are new right now, they're going to be very, very impactful on our lives within the next decade or so. And you can mess around with genetics too, kind of, and in the foreseeable future, because printing DNA is now way cheaper than what it was before, and it's going to be much cheaper in the future than what it is now. And so if we take a company like Cambrian Genomics, right, they have a website, and in the website they have a genome compiler. So I'd go on a website like Cambrian Genomics, I would pick out the uh, DNA sequence that I want, and then they would print it out for me in powder form, and then I would then take it, give it to a contractor, and then that contractor would then inject it into a bacteria. And that bacteria would have my DNA theoretically in it, and then I have my own little designer bacteria that I can hang out with. I think that's pretty cool. So the big picture overview is this. Uh, in the first step, a machine adds the nucleic acids like adenine, guanine, thymine, or cytosine, all of your combinations onto a plate. And then the second machine comes in, it color codes each sample, and then it uses a laser to determine which samples have errors in them and which ones don't. And then it takes the ones with no errors in them, and then it can then print it out for the customer. And by the way, when the customer receives it, uh, he still needs to find somebody that can inject the DNA into the cell that he wants. So 3D printing DNA is obviously really cool. But let me give you one example of where this could be a really good idea. So theoretically speaking, let's say you and I are farmers. We would know that certain crops like soybeans and peanuts have their own microbes in their roots that produce the same reactions as agricultural chemicals. So 
therefore they have and they're able to make their own fertilizer. Other crops though don't. So rice and corn for example need external fertilizer and so as a farmer this is a potential money sink for us where we're not only losing money but we're also polluting the environment more. And uh, so to prevent losing all that moolah we think that we should probably modify the DNA of the so what you and I want to do as farmers is exactly what other companies like Gingo is doing. So Gingo is a company that's actually genetically modifying certain crops so those microbes are able to pull the nitrogen from the air and then create their own fertilizer that way. And so, you know, that was only one example, but in all different kinds of industries, 3D printing DNA is the future of optimization. All right, so I thought this was a really cool topic to talk about. Uh, let me know your thoughts down below. Let me know if you think that 3D printing DNA and injecting it, genetic modifications is a good thing, what areas you're worried about, or just your thoughts in general. Uh, so as always, I will see you next week. Thank you for watching. Ciao.